Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the Pause Up Podcast. This is episode 17 of the show. My goodness, we are 17 episodes in. We're getting one step closer to that special episode 20, Kevin. That's going to be a, a crazy milestone. But for now, uh, thank you to everybody who is watching on the Pause Up Podcast Twitter or the Lemon City Live YouTube and Facebook channels. We are joined today with one of uh, one of my good friends that I've known for quite a bit. Uh, he is a writer and a photographer for the Panther Now Sports section. This is Adrian Valdivia. How are you doing, Adrian? I am doing good, guys. How are you? Ah, we we are we are doing great. We um we are what is it now? We're less than a week away from the FIU football spring game this Saturday. Obviously, a very fun time for. Students, fans, and alumni to see some football action before, obviously, the big hiatus heading into uh, August and September when college football yeah. kicks into gear. So, again, great to have you on, Adrian, and um, let's get right into it. First things first, Mr. Adrian, writer and photographer for Panther Now. Talk to us a bit. I'll, I'll, I'll get the uh, stage open for you to talk your talk with Panther Now. How, how is the section doing? Um, what have you been doing as of late? And uh, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been good so far. Um, to be honest, this semester I haven't really worked a ton with them like I did in previous semesters, but mm -hmm. I've still been trying to you know do do what I can, uh, whether it's just like simple photography stuff or just like reaching out to whoever's uh, a part of it now. But uh, it's still it's it's been good. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, I decided to try to do photography last semester. And I, I really enjoyed it. I, I went to every football game, home game, and I got a lot of photos for the for the team and just for the for the articles, and um, also the soccer game. I uh, unfortunately I didn't go to a lot of the games at the beginning of the season, but near the end of the season, when um when they were in the middle of conference play and everything, I went to those games, and it was just really fun, like experiencing new things like that with photography, and just like a whole new sport of soccer. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I really enjoyed that. So that's why I kind of wanted to try to get into that. But just the writing, like, as you know, Jake, I joined when you were still sports yeah. director. So, like, thank you for that, you know, and that was really yeah, Well, th then, th thank you for jo for joining, Adrian. Yeah. So for those who don't know, yeah, um, it's no secret. I was the director of sports at Panther now for a couple of years um, before I graduated last year. And Adrian was, was one of the top writers, the upper <laughs> echelon, along with, our, of course, our good friends Jonathan Mayer and Liam Rooney who are all beat writers of specific sports. Adrian, you were pretty much the basketball beat writer. That yeah, was what you were known for, but you also obviously also did some some baseball and some, some football as well. So, so that's super cool to see. And you're doing FIU athletics work as well, like you said, providing some photos as, mm -hmm. as well. That's, that's super cool. I got to ask, writing or photography, what's your number one right now? It's I really enjoy writing. I've always enjoyed it, hence mm -hmm. why I was like, let me try to be a communications major. Uh, but photography is just... I feel like I could do my own. I could do my own thing with writing, but mm -hmm. with photography, there's just so much you could do. Like, yeah. there's a fun celebration that I could get a picture of, or like a, or like a pool, like a sack, or this, or like a goal, or a dunk. Like, whereas in, with words, it's just like mm -hmm. they dunk the ball versus like a cool picture that could be on the thumbnail of an article. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and um, here, even here at Lemon City, something you know we always try to get done here is obviously you have to have a great, you have to have a solid article that describes the game as much as possible. You need a good photo to back that up. And whether it's our man, JC Ruiz, um, hop, uh, working on the photos or someone else, or we just rip, or we just get the photos from, from the teams. Yeah. A good photo with a good article definitely matters. So alrighty guys, there is, before we get to spring football, there was something a bit in, interesting that happened earlier today that I'd like to talk about because it was something uh, special for FI Athletics. It was the Rory Awards. Um, now, what the Rory Awards are, it's an it's an annual award, award show um, that's just based on uh, all of FIU Athletics, a bunch of categories and a bunch of winners, because I think there were two winners per category, like throughout the board. So I'd like to talk about some of the names there, there were. Um, and, and see if we have any hot takes or if we have any agreements or disagreements for who was selected. Um, but first off, shout out to FIU Athletics. Uh, 89 student athletes have and are scheduled to graduate during the upcoming fall sp 
spring and summer semesters or uh, semesters. So that's very cool. And um, across the board, student athletes posted a combined 3.39 GPA. And uh, there were 261 uh, student athletes that posted a G GPA of 3.0 or higher. So that's really cool. Shout out to FIU Athletics, you know, putting in the work both on and off the field. And yeah, let's get into it. So there was a team MVP for quite for every sport at FIU, and we'll go over we'll go over most of them and see whether we whether we agree or disagree with who was selected. So let's start let's start off with football, and the team MVP was Flex Joseph. And oh, no. it's a bit ironic the news we we heard today. Yeah, we'll talk we'll talk about Flex Joseph the injury yeah. later. Yeah, a, a bad injury for Flex Joseph ACL more than likely out for the season, but let's not focus on that now. Let's talk about the fact that he was chosen as the MVP for football for last year. Do we, how are we feeling on this? Is, is it an obvious no brainer or do you have somebody else in mind who you think should have taken the spot? No, this is, this can't get as obvious as it is. I mean, flex was the off the best offensive piece that you had last season. Um, just, mm -hmm. it couldn't have been more obvious than that. You couldn't be happier for him, and yeah, just pulling up. Uh, let's see, should come up any minute. So there it is, there it is. The award, team MVP flex. Uh, he he killed it, man. I think it was five seven touchdowns, over five hundred mm -hmm. yards rushing. I mean, and man, Jake and Adrian, if he had an offensive, a healthy offensive line, I think this guy definitely could have even broken out for more yardage and. Definitely was a probably the impact player, and it really sucks he's injured because he's probably he probably projected as your top offensive weapon entering this season. Where are my manners? I just there we go. Okay, got my microphone right here. But yeah, I I I think that I think I think you could make a case for Tyrese, but at the same time, that was kind of an off year for Tyrese. And no, it was it was not a good year for Tyrese. Moved, yeah, so. I'll say that I'll agree with that. I think Flex Joseph was a workhorse, and at times where the offense uh, struggled to move the ball in some of those horrific games for FIU that season, Flex still found a rhythm. And I'd say, yeah, I'd say definite uh, congrats to Flex, and he def definitely deserved that. Adrian, what I do you say? Yeah. I mean, no, no disagreements for me, to be honest, you know, like, like you said, you know, Tyrese had a great year and like, there was other players that performed very well too, but unfortunately they left the program. So yeah, it, players that it, stayed in the program, you know, this is well deserving for him. I mean, unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, the injury and everything is going to set him back a bit, but I mean, whoever is going to be the next RB1 or the RB2, like just those players that are coming up now, um, he's going to be like a great role model for them, you know, yeah. even if he's not able to play. Yeah, he, he can still he can still do a lot of work, even without actually playing the game, right? Um, moving on now, let's go to a different sport. And, and it, it's funny you talked about the fact that, you know. There's a couple uh, of football awards, Jake. There's a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awards. We're going to get into those real quick. We're going to yeah, get into not? those? Okay, um, I already had one lined up ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the MVP. So that was the team MVP for football. Now – Adrian, you you had mentioned the fact that because he stayed, right, uh, or, or if Tyrese had stayed, maybe he'd be eligible for the award. Well, isn't it ironic that the team MVP for men's basketball was Denver Jones? That is a bit ironic, but I the, the, the thing is, I understand, like, why they would want to give these awards to some players even if they did leave, but I don't know. Like, just when it comes to basketball, Denver Jones just had everything, like, he he had mm -hmm. the sportsmanship. He had like like the uh, every player on the team is just super nice, and we've talked to them after the games and everything. Yeah. Everyone's super charismatic and like uplifting of the other teammates. But I mean, Denver. When you look at it from like a perspective of when I first started writing was last semester, last last season, mm -hmm. um, not this past one, but the one before, and he was just a freshman. So talking to him and then seeing him come into like he was kind of like the number one guy I'd say this season. Oh yeah, he left, so he had to kind of take that role on his own as a sophomore or like a freshman transitioning to a sophomore. He's only like nineteen, so it's you know it's to see someone like that play such a big role in a team, even if he did leave. It, 
I don't know who else would have been able to really like deserve it as much as as Denver. Yeah. When just the statistics don't lie and the awards he got don't lie. What he was like he was what he was conference USA or no, that was Artur I was Arturo Dean. My, my, my mistake. But Denver no, Jones no, no. Still, Denver Denver was a part of the conference USA one yeah, of the Yeah, he was the first team all all yeah. all pro yeah. or however it goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking of this. freshman of the week, and that was Dean. That was that Dean. Was, that Dean was also got an yeah. award. Um, yeah, yeah, he got a couple of awards. Yeah, but... so just very quick with Denver. When you need someone in the clutch, Denver was that guy. We saw it in yeah. so many games where Denver Jones was the guy that late in the game, he's the one who's being – who's the ball is being fed to. Arturo Dean just getting those – just racking up assists, giving those to Dean – getting those shots, and, and Dean also setting up his big man. When you saw Mohamed Sonogo in the paint, you knew Dean was going to either lob it up to him or Dean's taking it himself. But Dean also got – Dean, Denver. Denver got every everyone involved in the offense. He got himself involved very well, and, man, this is such a well-deserved award, and I wish him the best in Auburn. And Yeah. yeah. I mean, many said it. FIU may not have deserved Denver Jones, and <laughs> – he because he's so damn good. He, I mean, he he's gonna kill it in Auburn now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So let's 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 now transition from men's basketball to baseball. And again, I think this is a big no brainer. It's Alex Sanchez taking out taking on the team MVP, MVP for baseball. And I mean, let let let's let's not sugarcoat it. There were not a lot of players in the in the baseball team last season that stood out like in, on a national level last season of course that was that was the final year of of Marvel Melendez during his time at FIU but Alex Sanchez was still consistently one of the big the big hitters on offense even when the team was in a slump Alex Sanchez was still the one that was hitting dingers right he was uh he was that guy and I, I personally think that you, you could maybe throw in Girardi into the mix, um, but Alex Sanchez, I, th I think, is a good call for team MVP for baseball. Are they talking about last season or this year? Yeah, last season. This is all for last year. This isn't the current current season. This is all for the 2022. Right? Yeah. So no, I think I think I think it's 2023 because it might be just was, because was, like... Denver, was Denver the best player last year? No matter what, I feel like we might have had Tevin if it was that case. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Let, let me. Let should, me let, let be me read the fine. Let me read the fine print here. Okay. Then again, they still in the middle of the season, so for baseball. Uh, at FIU Athletics celebrated the top performers of 2022 slash 23. So this is yeah. So okay. with FIU baseball, Sanchez has been out with injury. So mm -hmm. as I, I spoke to him after he earned the award. He's super happy about it. Very blessed. He said, I mean. He, you you can't you can't be much more happier for this guy. One of the hardest working guys out there. But there are definitely some other candidates who deserve this same award. You can mention Ryan Guida, DH Ryan Guida, who's been killing it, just some absolute slugger. You have then Mikey Rosario, Mike Rosario, who was the University of Miami transfer, Henry Wallen, um, Angel Tiburcio, who's looked really good on the mound this year for FIU. There's definitely a lot of names, but the one that's been the hottest is Alex Sanchez. Most consistent has been Alex Sanchez. Dante Girardi also is another one who deserved the award. He had like a 12-game hitting streak. He's mm -hmm. looked good so far. I mean, Ruben Carpio, Adrian Figueroa. Th this FIU baseball team is a fun team to watch. But if you're looking for consistency, Alex Sanchez yeah. was that, in which is, that's why I believe he won this award. Yeah, I I I, I agree. And moving on now let's i'd like to go through one more major spotlight one and, and it's men's soccer and the team mvp for that was steven uh it was steven afrifa uh, and again I, I i agree with the pick the the men's soccer team had pretty much so many all-stars in it that you you could just take a random player from the roster and put him as team mvp and i wouldn't you know I, I wouldn't be mad about it, but yeah, Stephen Afrifa, he was, I, I believe Afrifa was drafted in in the uh, MLS, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, he, he was. He, he was a top ten. Yeah, player. he had. I believe it was Kansas City. So yeah, Sporting mm -hmm. Kansas City. Um, he 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 had just a phenomenal year. What can I say? And uh, he was named United uh, Soccer Coaches Second Team All America. 
for for his talent on the pitch. And again, a, a big no brainer. I'm, I'm actually liking all these MVP picks. I know Tyler Hogan had a great year as well at at, at the keeper position, but I feel like Stephen was a great leader for the team, and he put it. And he was again one of the reasons why they got as far as they did. So good pick there. I I agree with it. Yeah. I'll let Adrian talk about this one. I mean, yeah, like I said, I wasn't really huge mm-hmm. in the soccer scene until the second half of the of the season. But I mean, like you said, Jake, every player on that team was just like every game you would see, especially like for the conference championship. Uh-huh. When everybody was getting their own little awards. Every player was just so well deserving of it. You know, like even if they didn't score a goal or get an assist, like just the communication and everything that the team had, it was a great team. So like, mm-hmm. Like you said, I mean, he was the MVP, yeah, and and, and uh, I don't know who got the awards, but in their eyes, like, he was the main guy. Yeah. But, I mean, everybody was just amazing on that team. Like, that team was something special. And yeah, so, so let's go into some team-specific awards real quick. So, the FIU football won the award for most improved team overall, and... I think it's a good pick, and again, we've talked about this quite a bit on the show, but the fact that FIU football went from a 1-11 team to, what was it, it was 4-8, is absolutely insane considering how rock bottom the team was during the end of Butch Davis's tenure and how Mike McIntyre um, had a brand new coaching staff, almost a brand new group of players entirely, and still put up four very solid wins. Yeah, I, I agree with it. It, it. It's a great call um, to put the football as the most improved team. I know some people say, oh, but uh, swimming – or not swimming. Uh, well, swimming has been great. Swimming and men's soccer have been the consistent teams. Well, that's the thing. It's consistently. They've been consistently great. The most improved award is for the, the team that has done a complete 180 from their, from their last season to now, and the soccer team has – back-to-back conference championships and NCAA tournament appearances. They won a bunch of awards, as I'm sure you could have guessed. But, yeah, football being most improved, um, I agree. And I hope we get to see football being most improved again from going 4-8 and eight to 6-6 six and six or something crazy like that. If they can get into a bowl game this season, then I wouldn't be shocked if they were the most improved team yet again. Yeah. I mean, even if they don't. Just them. I just remember like going into the into the coaches' press conference after they won their second game, which I believe was at Charlotte, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And then we were all like making jokes, like, "Oh, they doubled their win percentage from one win to two wins," and we're like, mm-hmm. "That's huge!" Like, it's yeah. huge that we just you know got that second win, something that was like we were inching at in that first of you know, the season last season. Um, and then the, when they got another win and then another win, it was just like growing and growing. And I was like, that's awesome. Like, yeah, yeah they got four wins, but I mean, four wins is a lot. Like, that's three more wins than they got last season and then more wins from the season prior. So it's like they improved a lot and they've just they're only going to keep improving from here on out, like with the players they've been bringing in and the mm-hmm. coaches and everything. I mean, I'm excited. Yeah. So yeah. some some other some other awards that stand out. Um Arturo Dean walked away with two individual awards. He won best record-breaking performance. Um, and, and again, for, for an, an FIU freshman to have the season that he had was was, yeah. was second to none. So that makes a lot of sense. And obviously, rookie of the year. I mean, duh. You know, he's probably one of the greatest rookies FIU basketball has ever had, period. Specifically in his freshman year. And now it's his team. Now it's yeah. his team. It, it, it's it's his team, team to lead. In his sophomore year, too, which is absolutely insane. Just like Denver, though, I feel like it's going to be a Mm -hmm. cool transition. It's going to be difficult, but, I mean, someone has to do it. Yeah. Yeah. He's the right guy for it. And let's let's, let's keep looking over the list here for some absolutely – some. Sean Patterson, I think he won a sportsmanship award. Yeah, Uh, every sport also had a sportsmanship award, and for – for football, for football, it was Reggie. It was Reggie. Reggie, Reggie, I'm sorry. Yeah, very well deserved. The guy not only had a great season for FIU, but he, I mean, he is a leader, and he's gonna be—he's gonna have to step up this year with with Gaith and Bernadel gone. It's gonna be him and Avery Huff leading the way for the defense, and spe- specifically, you're gonna have to be a big leader when you're—you know—especially in games where 
it's possible you struggle because FIU, as, as good as we think they could be this year, and that, as much as I want to say they'll probably make a bowl game, and just like you'll say, Adrian and Jake, that they have a good chance of making the bowl game, mm. you still have to step up in the, in the good times and the bad, you know, especially as a leader. And and Reggie Patterson's right guy to do it, and that shows a lot of why he won that award. Yeah, but but then again, I will say that the two injuries we were we learned about today will really hurt FIU. Yeah, we'll, in, we'll in talk about that. Exactly. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, the, the last two awards I, I want to quickly go over, uh, and, and there's like 50 different awards here. And again, congrats to every athlete that earned a, a reward or a team that earned a specific team award here. Um, great job. But the, the last two, and again, I'm not entirely sure why they did two awards per category. But the two best teams, the, the award winners for best team, there were two. And, again, this should come as absolutely no surprise, men's soccer and swimming and diving. I think the, those two teams have been, when you want to talk about awards and achievements, they have been the faces of FIU for, for years, of, for, for swimming near a decade, right? And near a decade for swimming and diving. And for yeah. men's soccer, obviously back-to-back conference championships, and FIU last season earning their first win in the NCAA tournament in a very long time against that that crazy game against New Hampshire, which we all remember. Wild. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and I will say, and I think Adrian and Jake, you guys obviously are at the school more than I have been, but. <laughs> You could, you guys could probably say that's a soccer school. FIU is a soccer school right now. No, when there, there's no doubt about it. And if, if you were to, and maybe this would be a fun project in the future, if you were to, if you were to ha- do a survey, just walk up to people on, on campus and just ask them that specific question: what, what, what's the, what's the best, what's the best sport on, on campus? A good, a good, a good chunk is going to say men's soccer. Obviously, their stadium isn't big, but they still fill the seats up. Man, and thanks the team has put in dollars. consistent work. Thanks to the $2 million donation. Uh, mm-hmm. That stadium is definitely going to get some renovations. And when it does, that stadium is going to be packed, man. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it already is packed, right? And yeah. Hey, it's standing room only and everything, dude. I mean, yeah. you get a ticket just to stand there for a full game. I mean, it's a nice area. It's a nice area, but you would obviously love to see a little bit more bleachers. They have to add bleachers. I know for the mm-hmm. conference for the, the yeah. NCAA tournament, they had to add bleachers, like a whole set of bleachers, which yeah, were never there. It's, it's so. always fun, funny seeing the process of them bringing the truck in with the bleachers and setting them up correctly. Not yeah. to mention they bring in the food trucks because they know extra students going to be there. Oh my God. And but yeah, if we're on agreement on this. If there's any stadium that needs renovations right now, it's men's soccer, right? And Obviously. it will. And it definitely will. We spoke to Scott Carr, and we probably will have to bring him back soon. But, mm-hmm. you know, he, he he mentioned soccer as the main stadium to, to get yeah. renovations to, aside from the football locker room. Mm-hmm. All right. So, congrat- again, congratulations to all the award winners for the Rory Awards. And, and, he, and they had Rory looking dapper in that suit at the event, too, like looking extra fly at the event. So I think it's I think it's news break time, Jake. Oh, you think it's news break time? We're twenty minutes, minutes in. Minutes in? Yeah, why the hell not? Yeah. All right. Welcome to FIU News Break, hosted by me. Your your place for all things FIU athletics related and just FIU related in general. Let's start with football. A new face is joining the coaching staff coming out of the University of Miami as Demarcus Van Dyke is now the brand new cornerbacks coach at FIU. Van Dyke, who has no relation to Miami's current quarterback of the same name, was a defensive back for the Canes who was drafted in 2011 by the Las Vegas Raiders at the time, of course, known as the Oakland Raiders. He was a defensive analyst last season at UM and will now serve to train FIU's secondary, a position that he was very much familiar with. Moving on to the United States Football League, the USFL, if you will. Former FIU quarterback James Morgan was announced as the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Maulers a week ago. And Morgan started his first game yesterday against the New Orleans Breakers for Pittsburgh. And while it did result in a 15-22 to loss at the hand of the Breakers, Morgan is still set to lead Pittsburgh for the upcoming 20, 2023 USFL campaign. And now for your final FIU-themed story. Uh, Following an election season that saw tremendous youth voter turnout 
FIU has been designated a voter-friendly campus by the Campus Vote Project and NASPA in recognition of its institution-wide efforts to encourage students to head to the polls and make their voices heard. These, the selection process examined written plans put in place by colleges and universities during uh, last year's election season to foster civic engagement and educating them on the political process. And uh, yeah, it's now going to be a voter friendly campus for the future. So go out and vote. And that was your look at FIU Newsbreak. So let's get into spring football. As we, as I'm sure we all know, the uh, spring football game is right around the corner. It's on Saturday. I want to say 6.30 p.m. Is, is, is that correct? Yeah. So gates will open at 5.30. Game starts at 6.30. All righty then. So there's a lot of headlines, and let's just get into the big bad the big bad news of the day. Uh, it, Flex Joseph, as well as Amari Jones, I believe, were both um, both both suffered injuries. Um, recently, and both are expected to miss the upcoming season completely. Um, let's start with flex. Let's start with flex again. One of the leaders of the offense, one of the most well-known FIU running backs, not just for his time here, but maybe all time yeah. for FIU football. And the fact that he's going to miss a full year, it, it was an ACL, I believe, and yeah. he he suffered that at the at the uh, practice, I believe, at the uh, Luke. Campbell Field. Yeah, that was yeah. that was really bad. I was there. I saw the play. You immediately yeah. noticed something was wrong with Flex the second he got hit down. He could not get up. He was holding onto that knee, and I told myself inside, I was like, "That looks like an ACL." Yeah. And you kind of just thought right there, it's like, "Yeah, I'm this." You you basically thought at that point he's out. Um, you know, now when it comes to what the running back room looks like. You still have transferred Shamari Lawrence from South Dakota. You will have Kijan Owens, who made a couple, who got a good amount of playing time last year. And then finally, you have Antonio Patterson, who was mainly a special teamer, but he got a couple reps out there. Uh, I, I think, in my opinion, the starter should be Shamari Lawrence, who put up very similar stats to Flex last year. Jake, if you want to look him up for me on ESPN. Mm -hmm. They put up very, very similar stats. Shamari barely rushed over 500 yards, got, I think, five touchdowns. Um, flex, very, very similar numbers. So that shouldn't be an issue in terms of backing up the running back. And then finally, as Jake mentioned, um, quarterback Amari Jones out for the year with an Achilles injury. Coach announced that today at the practice. Um, Amari really never got any playing time. He, had, he actually hasn't played a single snap for FIU football in the regular season. So... Um, I thought he actually had a decent chance to do that this year, especially the way he had been playing in spring. He looked pretty good, showing the mobility, looked good in red zone drills. I mean, he 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 got a significant playing time as the uh, you know as the quarterback there for FIU. I thought he was actually going to play a good amount of the spring game. You know, just assuming he may not get a shot at at playing yeah. this in the regular season once again. But you know, FIU still has now now down to three QBs. You have Grayson, Hayden, Carlson. And uh, South Florida legend or South Miami, South Dade legend, Kiwan Jenkins, who will probably get a significant amount of playing time in the spring game. I wonder how that will work in terms of, you know, you would have thought you had two QBs on one side, two on the other. And now you have one QB on one side, two on the other. So maybe you see a battle of Hayden versus of great Hayden Carlson versus Grayson James. And you have Kiwan just backing up both teams. But We'll see what happens. Very huge loss there. Very big loss there. I think the biggest one, obviously, is Flex. Who, Jake? We we talk, We spoke. I think we even voted him team MVP on this show. Yeah. Where this guy was the heart and soul of this team, not only leadership wise because he's a great leader. I mean, and I think he still will be. He was going to be. I, I believe he's still going to be with the team and everything. Um. But now that that hurts, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, yeah, he can still make an impact with leadership but this i mean you you want him on the field thankfully he still keeps his year of eligibility uh, what i was told is he could possibly just redshirt next season just to make sure he's good to go but you would like to obviously see him play this year and you would like to you you would like to see him just back to normal next season for his, for what would be now his official final year next season do you guys know if the spring game is going to be an actual game or if it's going to be like what it was last season where it was just mini practices so it's probably going to be a set of mini practices and then basically a, a, a scrimmage. Like a between, small scrimmage. 
Yeah, like a like a small script. It's not going to be a full on fledged. I'll, I'm going to see. Game. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to tell Johnny to ask, um, Coach, because yeah. last season it was a, I believe, just mini practices and then like small scrimmage, two hand touch, kind of like nothing. Like we saw things, you know, of players, but not so much. Like to your point, Kevin, what you were trying to say of like the different running backs and the quarterbacks. Like it wasn't so much that. It was more like just practice with fans yeah I think that's what it felt like so i don't know if, how much we're gonna see of the players but you know it's mm -hmm. it, at least it gives us we'll, we'll see quite a bit obviously when it comes to the quarterback room every quarterback is gonna throw some snaps some more than others mm -hmm. right i i as kevin mentioned um the hometown local legend of uh, of keon he, he's probably gonna get quite a bit of snaps right and probably more than any, Jay, any other i want to ask you yeah, what do they call Q1 Junkins? Uh, <laughs> lights out. Lights out. Uh oh. -uh. Okay. Lights out. Lights out. Two. So, that was a good one. <sighs> I had to do it. They actually do call them lights out. I just want to tell you yeah. that right now. That's his actual yeah, nickname. Cool nickname. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I was thinking in the back of my head. It's lights out, isn't it? What is he gonna? Oh yeah, that's my job, Kevin. God, I had to do it. Did you do it last time, last show? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, of course I did. You 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 think I would forget? Yeah, okay. a lot a lot the that Jake did when they first signed Coach Mac was he did a he said like let's get ready for some football or something and that was just a constant like sound bite that we would always just have. Yeah, Mike McIntyre has a lot of clips of, of, of him just saying quotes. They've become pretty much synonymous with this time here at FIU. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, 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 don't, I don't even know how this story began anymore of how we made the Lights Out clip pretty much our official clip of the Pause I think Up I, podcast. I think I made it. I made it because when we're talking about recruitment, I think that's how we started okay. it all. So the, the spring game is upcoming, and this is pretty much time for final thoughts before we get to see them in action. Who do we think are going to be the guys, the team captains for both sides of the ball? So assuming it's an actual game, I, let's go off of that first. Let's assume mm -hmm. this is going to be a game. Man, the, you know, I will say this. If there's something that the Miami Hurricanes do well, it's that spring game. That looked like a fun spring game. That was an actual game where they went to Drive Pink Stadium and they played a full-on game. That was that was pretty cool. But anyways, spring game is obviously a good time for young players who are new, especially the freshmen, to go out there and show off what they could do, see if they could earn some playing time in the regular season. Um, the main players, obviously, I, I, and I wrote this on an article, which will be dropping sometime this week, maybe right the day before the spring game, besides the injury article, which should be dropping tonight. But um, the first, obviously, is going to be the quarterback play. How will that look like? How will we see who will be most comfortable in this offense? From what I've seen with many of the media members there, I've seen Eric and Jonathan and Johnny. Um, the guy's been Grayson. He's looked the best. Not that any quarterbacks look particularly better than the other, but Grayson has – no one has looked better than Grayson to the point where you could say that's going to be the starter over Grayson James. Kiwan's looked good. I said overwhelmed at first. Maybe a little uncomfortable in the offense, but he's kind of looked a lot better. The Charles Hadley practice went very well for him, in my opinion. Besides throwing one pick, he threw a couple touchdowns. After got very mobile player, got into the red zone, and then Hayden Carlson looked really good. And the one thing that may be the defining factor with let's start Carlson at some point over Grayson would be the ability to extend plays. Carlson has some jets, man. He can move around. He's going to extend the plays. And we saw that in the final game of the season against Middle Tennessee where he did that a lot. And although it did lead a couple times to a couple interceptions, if you just work on some you know, mechanical stuff, you work on the offense, you obviously those would no, 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 maybe not, no longer would be picks. Then finally, Grayson is the guy who looks the best in the offense. He's the one who players rally, rally behind. Um, he's probably going to be the starter. So that's the way I see it. Then obviously the wide receiver core, no real number one right now, Jake and Adrian. Um, the one, the, the designated number one right now would be technically be Chris Mitchell, who has the most playing experience. And Jake, we talked about this. If you mm -hmm. know before Tyrese, there was no real number one wide receiver with FIU. It was really just spread out that ball. And you could talk a little more about that, but that is something we could also see this season 
if yeah. Chris Mitchell really doesn't live up to that number one hype as, as a wide as doesn't live up to the wide receiver one hype, which Tyrese did. And then finally the offensive line, just see how that works. And then defense, they've looked pretty good so far in spring. Now you could say they've looked good, but they've also been playing an FIU offense, which has looked pretty mediocre at times. So take that as you will mm-hmm. with that. The defense has looked good, but they have some real nice names. They have yeah. defensive line looks a lot better, a lot more five tool type. Um, then obviously the cornerbacks. I'm actually very excited with Tyler, mm-hmm. with Van Dyke coming in to work with those guys who are going to be studs. And then finally just linebacker core mm-hmm. looks real good with Avery Huff, Reggie Patterson. You have to be very excited what you're seeing with the FIU football. And hopefully the spring game is what we think it'll be. And we'll have some fun watching that. Yeah. Adrian, quick question for you. So you, 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 um, you were at, you said you were at pretty much every football game last year, mm-hmm. right? The home games, um, at least, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are, so you were at the uh, spring football game last year as well, correct? I, yes. I wanted to say yes. So how would you say the, um, the hype for the spring football game has felt around you on campus? Uh, heading into this game. I was talking about it with Jonathan and shout out Johnny. Yeah. Shout he's out. watching right now. Shout out to him. Yeah. He may be our only viewer right now, actually multiple like, so uh, in our student union, they have like um, a big TV area where they usually have like things that they display current events, like a, a homecoming week or this mm-hmm. or that or so whatever. Yeah. And I haven't seen anything yet of the spring game. And I go, I go to class every day. I haven't seen anything of the spring game on posters or on that. Or So to be honest, like I knew it was happening, right? But I know a lot of people commute. So a lot of people aren't super in tune with FAU athletics unless they're into the specific sport. But even then, it's like people know about the first game. People don't know about the second football game, you know? So I feel like a lot of people might not know that it's happening I mean, like FAU Athletics is posting it and they're doing everything they can, but I haven't seen as much hype as during the regular season when they would have come to watch FIU soccer, come to watch FIU football, softball, whatever it was. I haven't seen that for the spring game yet, and I'm confused why. So I hope people go, but I also don't know how many people actually know about it. So huh. I'm interested to find out. Like that, that's, that's interesting. Because last um, year it was a big thing, if you remember, just because. Yeah, it was a huge deal you know, last year. Car, I remember McIntyre. Everybody was new. Yeah, I remember prior to the spring game last year. Like, I think I think it was the week before. They had a sort of welcome party at the football stadium, if you will, where they pretty uh, yeah, much I saw, I saw the live stream. Yeah, yeah. they it, they live streamed it. They introduced the, the the entirety of the new coaching staff, and I think a couple of players were there as well, and that was super fun. And obviously, the big takeaway from that party was to advertise the spring game that was the week after i want to say that it was the week after if my memory serves me correct but it's a bit interesting that you're not seeing as much advertisement for yeah the, for the i mean i just haven't it should be because last season it was such a big thing you know obviously the new athletic director and you had football coach knew everything like new dorms tamiami i mean that was the main selling point too of mm-hmm. come watch our spring game you could tailgate in the pavilion out in front of the dorms yeah. uh before that uh, they had it in the middle of the two honors colleges, which is like not an ideal area compared to this other area. So this year, I hope it's a big, I hope it's a big deal for a lot of people, but I mm-hmm. really don't know, like realistically, how many people even know about it. And, you know, I, I don't like to bring up our neighbors in Coral Gables, but they always make a big deal out of their spring game as well. I believe it was a few days ago. They, they played it at the uh, Drive Pink Stadium, home of Inter Miami. Um, and, and I get, and, you know, you look at the, the billboards on the turnpike, as well as advertisements, you just see, um, on your phone and computer, like on, on websites and whatnot, uh, you, you see, there's, you see that they advertise their spring game very well. And yeah, I, I remember FIU pretty much did the same thing as last year. You, you, you went on the turnpike, you saw a, a billboard or two that advertised FIU football. Yeah. And, uh, Coach Mike McIntyre and Scott Carr were doing all these interviews when they were first brought into the program of going on this news channel and this news channel. So I feel like the hype was building up slowly. Even if you're just a regular student, let's say, who obviously isn't going to tune into the news at 8 a.m. to watch a football coach. But the news was slowly building up the hype, at least, uh, 
to where it was like, oh, okay, I'll check this out on Saturday. And then a lot of people showed up. Like it was, mm -hmm. a, it was a lot, a lot. Like it was the most packed I've ever seen the state like with students for a football. And it wasn't even a real game, which was the fun mm -hmm. part too. Cause a lot of students were bummed out that it wasn't a real game, me, myself included. Cause I didn't, I, I thought it was oh first spring practice or first spring game. I thought it was going to be a game. Yeah. With a lot of people. And then when it wasn't, I guess people were kind of bummed, but they still stayed because it was fun. Yeah. It, it was fun. And they always make it fun because you could, you can like, I think you can actually go on the field after the game to like yeah, talk to the really players good. and talk to the coaches and get autographs and, and take photos. It, it's super cool the way they it's have gonna it. It's going to be a fun time. It's going yeah, it's, it's to be a fun time. Regardless again, of what happens, we're going to have a good time. Yeah, hopefully it's yeah. the same thing. It's and regardless of how FIU is advertising it, again, we encourage everybody, uh, go, go to the spring football game, support the team, have a fun time. Uh, it it, sh it should be a lot of lot of cool activities for everyone to do, regardless of if you're a fan, if you're a student, or if you're an alumni. Uh, it, it should be super fun. And hey, you can catch us there. Say hey if you want. Why the hell not? I think we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be doing a little little hour long presentation, if you will, during the spring football game on FIU's Mixler. Who. I mean, we've all been, Adrian, I don't know if you've been on it, but we'll, we've all have had experience with the FIU Mixler at one point or the other. Mm -hmm. And um, Somehow I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kevin somehow lodged his way into FIU Mixler history at that Miami uh, FIU baseball. Which game. I'm excited for, May 10th. Yeah, the rematch is going to be sick because... Yeah, well, the third one, right? For... Yeah, the, the third one is like May... 11? 10th. 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 Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then I think the Coral Gables one is the 16th, if I'm not mistaken. No, Coral Gables is the 10th. FIU Damn. back at home is the 16th. Hey, you're okay. close enough. It's fine. By the way, um, one last thing about football that I that I found out here that I'm sure is giving this team a lot and the Mike McIntyre a lot of motivation. ESPN recently released their football power index rankings of all 133 fbs teams like power ranking from obviously 133 to number one on who they think the best teams in fbs are oh, 133 of them oh there's God. 133 i don't think you want to mention where fiu ended up. fiu was 131 131 the only teams they beat out were the new mexico state aggies who are also in conference usa and the University of Massachusetts Minutemen, who were uh, Charlotte, in, 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 ended in, up higher than them. Charlotte, uh, let's see, the thirty-three. I believe Charlotte Rose Charlotte. fired their coach, though they were popping. So twenty-four. They're one hundred and twenty-two. Charlotte is. What? But yeah, Charlotte uh, a, a fired couple their of teams coach. that are above FIU in this list. I won't obviously. I can't go through all one hundred and whatever of them, but the Akron Zips. The Louisiana, I, I believe that's Louisiana, Monroe Warhawks, the New here? Mexico Lobos, the Bowling Green Falcons, the UTEP Miners, Kent State, Colorado, Texas State. All these teams are above FIU. Where was uh, Colorado at? Sorry? Where was Colorado at? I'm just curious now with everyone going there. Colorado, as in Colorado State. Oh, wait. Oh, oh the, the Buffalo. Deion, Deion Sanders. Uh, oh, I, th I thought that's what you said. I didn't know if you said Colorado, Colorado State. Colorado is. This is kind of stupid because they don't have a number list here. Yeah, you can count, have to count it, but okay, they're yeah. like somewhat bottom tier, somewhat middle, middle of the pack. Where is FAU? <laughs> okay. I think he's got to be like Florida middle. Atlantic. That's the middle. Is middle. Straight yeah. middle, they're along the same lines as Coastal Carolina, North Texas, Toledo, mm -hmm. Louisiana, and UAB. They're along that same. I'll say this with with FIU and the Conference USA, they do have a good chance to qualify for a bowl. Yeah, because even if it's, I, I don't I, know if it's still, is the Bahamas Bowl still a thing? Yes. Well, well they could probably uh, qualify for that one. Is FIU still yeah. in the? They're not. No, in they, the left, they left the conference. They left yeah. the conference. Yeah. Charlotte left. Right? So, and, and Charlotte, if you're wondering, the um, the highest conference USA team on this list was Western Kentucky, um, who is again mid. Actually, they're they're Western Kentucky is I think forty spots behind the University of Miami, who is right outside the top twenty five. Um, well, I mean, 
So yeah, Western Kentucky is the highest, followed by Liberty, who I think we we obviously no surprise Liberty is up there. They have a great program. Louisiana Tech after them, followed by Middle Tennessee, uh, uh, UTEP, FIU, and uh, New Mexico State. I guess this list does not have Jacksonville State and Sam Houston State yet because they are they're just now moving up to FBS. They were FCS. So, yeah, by the way, in case you were wondering, ESPN's projected record for FIU this season is four and eight, just the same as last year. So ESPN believes FIU's record is not going to change. I think we said six wins, right? Right, Jake? We said six. Yeah, I uh, we we both said six. um, And that that was again, that was an optimistic idea. Six and six get into a bowl game. Um, so, so definitely possible, by the way. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's great. Obviously, again, as we talked about earlier, FIU got the football, got the most improved team from going one and 11 to four and eight. If they go six and six and get, in, get into the bowl, they deserve to be most improved again for for getting back into the college football postseason. Yeah. So, again, maybe that's a bit of motivation. I guarantee you a lot of the players and coaches have already seen this list. They know yeah. that. FIU is a hundred and thirty-one. The out one of thing I want to thirty-three. The last thing I want to mention. I, this is kind of more of a news break type thing, but Dorian Hall mm-hmm. worked out for the Miami Dolphins, so Ooh. we could see an FIU alum on the Dolphins. We 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 thought that was going to happen with uh, Borigalis. I want to say also with um, um, Devontae Price too. We thought right. They they worked out with Miami. Um, I mean, I feel like everybody works out. Yeah, with, with your local team, right? If you're and gonna... by the way, this is the last thing I'll say for. Um, actually, a couple of things because in case y'all are wondering, the, who the highest Florida team is? It is Miami. Actually, no, I take that back. It's not Miami. No. The Florida Gators yeah. and Florida State are in front of them. Florida State is like. Uh, I can count this. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Florida State is number 14. Uh, yeah, the Florida Gators are 19. 5, 26, 27, 28, 29. And Miami is number 31. That makes sense. I feel like 31 might be a little too high for Miami. Possibly. Um, yeah. They, they, yeah. they really, not to say it like that, but they kind of sucked last year. Yeah. yeah By I the mean, way, I, I think under, a, under a lot of this list I'm looking at, and I'm like, eh, right? Because... The top 10, by the way, is Penn State at number 10. Nine is Notre Dame. Eight is Clemson. Seven is USC. Six is Michigan. Number five is Texas. Four, LSU. Three is Georgia. Two, Alabama. One, Ohio State. The fact that, obviously, Georgia's losing Stetson Bennett. That's a big loss for them. But, I mean, god damn, they're coming off like one of the best seasons in college football history, and they're only yeah. at number three? I think they should flip Ohio State. Because who yeah. does Ohio State have now? I have no idea. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Like, By the way, the fact that Notre Dame and Penn State are here, despite them pretty much not doing anything last season, is kind yeah, of funny. And the fact that Tennessee is nowhere to be found, too. I'll, Tennessee, who smoked Clemson in the Orange Bowl game, even though Clemson is number eight, and Tennessee is nowhere to be found in the top ten. That's weird. But, yeah. A funny add. list. Obviously, it's not set in stone, and things are going to change. There are going to be some teams that do not as good as you would think, and there are going to be teams that overachieve. We saw that last year, obviously, with, with TCU, who made it all the way to the championship game. So anything can happen. I think FIU is a much be- much better than a 4-8 and eight team. I think they've improved. They're going to be either 5-7 and seven or what we really want to see, 6-6. Six and six. And it's crazy, right? Because FIU, a team that lost Gaetan Bernadel, their defensive leader, Tyrese Chambers, their best wide receiver. Now you lost Flex Joseph. You lost a couple offensive linemen during spring practice. I mean, you know. You gotta yeah. Be, uh, but it's they, realistic. It's realistic. You know, like, It's realistic. Like, and, and, I mean, you have to give it – you know, props to the recruiting and the amount of guys that got the guys that got from the transfer portal. You know, Shamari Lawrence. If, if you didn't have him, you would be having Keyshawn Owens out there, which not the ideal situation. I think Keyshawn and Antonio Patterson need to wait one more year before they really shine under that running back one light because Shamari Lawrence is going to give you about the same production as Flex would. <laughs> and uh, by the way, I found out one last thing about this power index. Guess what FIU's power index was last season? 
They were last, I believe, right? They were last. They were dead last. Yeah. I remember yeah, that I was like, oh, that's FIU. Out of, yeah. Um, they were actually behind University of Massachusetts. So, who's the last I mean, one? Progress. Uh, it was, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure it was the University of Massachusetts was dead yeah. last. Yeah, Don't FIU worry, was in front oh. of. Next New season, they'll be in the top 120. <laughs> yeah, FIU again, 131. They're in the only teams they're in front of are Conference USA buddies, New Mexico State, uh, who FIU did beat last year. So I, I think that's a no doubter. And the UMass Minutemen, who for like the last two decades have been an awful football franchise. You can just ask FIU. They they blew the they blew the brakes out of UMass one year by a score of like 60 to 6 or something crazy like that. So yeah. All righty then. That was your look at football. And again, um, go to the spring game. Support the team. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we'll be there. We'll be we will there. Be there. Yeah, I will be there. Be there. It's yeah. Eric Henry's final time. At yeah. FIU, Shout so. out to Eric Henry. He's yeah. he's he's um after God, how many years has he been with the team? Uh, six seasons. Uh, six. six seasons. He's he's moving on. We don't know exactly where he's going as of right now, but of course we wish him the best of luck. Eric Henry has been on the show twice now. And and we'll get been, it. We'll, and we'll definitely get his outsider's perspective of FIU. Yeah. When he's gone, but he's you know he's a great guy. And yeah, he's, he's a great, great guy. guy. And yeah. as far as FIU athletics goes and their presence on social media, Eric Henry has played a big part of that, providing and the we'll latest see. scoops. Yeah. Um. And, and yeah. So and we'll see who's <laughs> next in line for that role. He's also given me some opportunities too when it comes to mm. just. Yeah, reaching out to certain websites or certain friends of his that he knows to cover other schools. Mm-hmm. He's a great so, person. We yeah, we, we wish him good luck wherever he goes next. So, Adrian, I want to talk with you about something. And again, thanks for being on the show and and, and chilling with us, talking some FIU sports. Of course. Uh, I, I want I want I want to know how you felt the day you found out that Denver Jones was leaving <laughs> uh, basketball because it, I I remember when you were able to talk with Denver Jones. Um, like almost a year ago now, feels like just talking about him, talking about the players he was with at FIU and his expectations for the upcoming season. Um, yeah. you know, how did you feel about it, about that loss for men's basketball? I mean, I kind of saw it coming. I don't know. I didn't want it to happen, you know, but like seeing a player like that progress at the level he did, like I remember last season when he got, um, or like the like not this one, but the one before. Yeah, he got, uh, he came off the bench and like he did something really good in like the last few minutes of the game, and I was like, damn, this guy's a dog, you know. Mm-hmm. And then seeing him progress into this season after Tevin left, uh, it was, I mean, a lot of players left, you know. So seeing him having to be that number one guy, like we spoke about, uh, and just seeing him actually like thrive under the, under the pressure, I guess, you know, not so much crack. I was like, he's special. And if he leaves, it makes sense. Like Tyrese left and it, who knows really why Tyrese left, right? Because like he was the number one guy here and he was doing really good here. De- so was Denver. But I mean, I feel like for basketball. They, they just for, wanted better opportunities to shine and yeah. be a star. I mean, and look, spotlight look at and this. Tyrese when you go to the SEC, like yeah. that's a huge upgrade. Like, you know. And Tyrese like, goes back to Maryland. Football. Yeah. Tyrese goes back to his home state. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't think he's really complaining. He has one year left. He'll yeah. probably be a late round draft pick. So, he'll get a shot. But with Denver, yeah. I mean, like, I wasn't upset. I was, I was like, bummed out, you know, whatever. Like, he, like, he's leaving the uh, uh, a young program, but he's leaving a program that's, like, still young and new. And, like, I feel like he's already surpassed the level yep. that mm-hmm. FIU's at. Like, FIU's a great program and everything, but – like if you have the opportunity to you know go to uh, a place like I, Auburn, you know, so you, you, you mentioned it, SEC. Yeah, like we 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 just saw what their buddies Alabama and uh, how how great their year was and 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 how they looked in the uh, the basketball tournament. But yeah, yeah, like even if let's say he went to FSU, right, a team that underperformed like immensely for the whole season, you know, I mean, it would still be huge for him to go to a school like that just because. The competition you play you play duke you play unc mm-hmm. uh miami you know who went to the final four and now he's going to the sec where you play the gators you know uh, though, and- though to be fair denver jones he he played some competition oh i think yeah. he played at a final four team in F- fau 
granted, nobody had any yeah. any vision that FAU was going to be as monster a team as they were. Those guys be. are going to continue to be a powerhouse too. I mean, they're losing a good amount of players. John L. Davis, I believe, is gone. A couple yeah. other guys are going to the draft, but they're still going to be a good team. Mm-hmm. And Dusty I mean, May, he's, he's a. Or maybe they're just back to what they were last a couple of years ago. You know? We'll see. But I mean, I, th- I, th- I think Dusty May is a great coach. He got that 10 year deal to stay at FAU. 10 and, years? Uh, yeah, 10 year deal. Um, you got the Wayne and, Gretzky. And he, they're going to that new conference. They're going to the American, the AAC. So that's going to be fun, too. Like, I'm yeah. that, is that, that's, like, that's a completely new conference? No, the AAC has been around for a while. It, AAC, worked. yeah. All right, all right, okay, okay. With with uh, the South Florida, Cincinnati, the, the American Athletic Conference, right? right, right. Yeah, this game it was at the Marlins game the other day. Threw mm-hmm. out the first. Pitch. Yeah, I saw oh. that he threw out the first pitch. Thank God I didn't go to that game. <laughs> I was away from that. I went to the. I I, 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 it was a good time. I was at. I was with a certain someone, which I will not mention. At the Marlins game, they were advertising uh, the FAU Final Four, and I was like, good for them. Like, I mean, I know I go to FAU, but, like, it's just funny seeing a team, like, that's in your conference just do so good. And I was like, you know, that's yeah. incredible. And, like, and FAU, FAU made money off of it, so. Yeah, and FAU didn't, which is super funny. Yeah. The money they the money they made for the conference, their share is they're not getting because they're leaving the conference. That's, I mean, the popularity is enough. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, they're gonna generate so much off of that. I mean, yeah, like the players that would want to go now from high, like the players that I guess didn't really consider it because it's a smaller school. Now, my consider, my, oh, my and consider. and but but at the same time, I feel like what we saw in the final four kind of hurts the basketball team is FIU specifically because now if 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 an, if a high school basketball player wants to play in the state of Florida, he's gonna look to either the two big dogs, the Canes or the Owls. FIU is kind of left in the dust if you will i yeah. mean obviously it's 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 evident that florida talent is, well, is, is I mean, abundant right it's I'm abundant. Gonna share some good news and i'll find it now but fiu did just make it a a pretty big i guess commitment mm-hmm. and jonathan was the one who broke the news johnny and jonathan mayor i'll find it right here his name is i don't i don't even want to say the name because i don't even know how to say it oh okay true Chuku Okiki, hang on. Share your put put your phone up to the screen so we can we can we can we can see this. Okay, that was a bad idea. I can't see. <laughs> that was a really bad idea. Yeah. Well, we'll just say average, oh, yeah. average you know, eight point nine points per game, six rebounds, one point two blocks per game. Led all of JUCO in games played. Second team All Pan Panhandle Conference. Was part of a TCC squad that went 31 and 6 in 2022 2023. Wow. So nice addition. Nice That's addition for FIU. He's from Florida. He's just coming a few hours down. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, it shows that FIU still makes some moves with recruitment and transfer portal and all that stuff. And yeah. Johnny I mean, has always been. Too. You know, we got Arturo Zine. They got, um, what's, I forget his first name. Deshaun Jay- 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 Giddens was, was a. Commitment, right? John Williams, right? From the NC from Division Two. Corey Brewer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got yeah. they got some guys. Yeah. Alrighty yeah, then. Let's start to wrap up here. Kevin, do you have any motivation to talk about FIU baseball? They've been no, not really. <laughs> they 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 got they got swept. They're playing tomorrow against FGCU. That's Hopefully the makeup that, game, right? They are, they're making that I up. Believe, yeah. I believe that's a makeup game. Johnny, yeah, if, you're, if you're into chat, Johnny, please let me know. But jo- Johnny, be- I have the schedule right here, uh, uh, Adrian. He He's going to be very it's gonna be a very difficult week for FIU baseball. I mean, oh, yeah, no doubt. Play, you you're, playing, you're playing ranked FGCU, and then you're playing ranked U- UTSA. So oh, UTSA. Yeah. doesn't get yeah. much easier for you. Jake and I will be there for, like, Maybe like an inning or two on on Saturday before the the football game, because it's literally a walk from one stadium to another, which is something great about FIU. I want to say something that FIU beats a lot of schools out, and when you have each stadium literally a walking distance to. Yeah, and and like the soccer and basketball arenas again, pretty pretty damn close by. Um, it's literally right next to each other, and you can yeah. still walk from football over to the. Football practice facility. Like if, if you wanted to go from uh, the tennis courts, which, which I think are the furthest thing away from the football stadium, that's still only like a seven, eight minute walk. Exactly. So, 
so Jake and I will be there for I guess the start yeah. of the game unless Jake and I split duties and he goes over to football for a while but Johnny will be there he's going to call the first couple of innings so mm-hmm. if you guys want to listen to that on FIU Mixler mm-hmm. so sounds good it's going to be so, a fun weekend a fun weekend yeah, oh, yeah super fun. fun they actually promoted that they call it super super spring saturday yes that's gonna I, be. Fun. I, I did see that. Yes, I softball did. at one, baseball at four, FIU football, which I'm super pumped for at six thirty. Mm, yeah. So I think everyone's just excited to get back in football mode. Yeah, I mean, and then, and again, this is people's last chance to get back into football before the team takes a break and gets ready for uh, the, the, the the first summer, game against summer the, workouts. Yeah, summer yeah. workouts. Yeah, you, you have the workouts, but as yeah, as far as like. That. I don't know if they – I remember, like, last time I tried talking to them about it, they said it just depends what the NCAA says. By the way, I – and this this just came to me. FIU did announce, obviously, the brand-new Vice uniforms. What if we saw them for the first time at this spring game? They didn't announce them, right? They they No, they announced that they were going to ha- make them, right? That they're oh, going to yeah. be a thing. When did they, they announce when the they would debut it? I think the spring game would be the perfect time to do that. Did they do that last season, last spring game for the new uniforms? Yeah, they, they wore the new uniforms. Okay, well, then maybe there's a chance. Yeah. FIU, something that they – I love it. They always change their their uh, their field to, to a different look. So Yeah. Well, they just they – just, they they That's going to continue too. Which is huge. Gonna yeah. It's going to get people going. Mm-hmm. The Vice I mean, it, it literally – the Vice field made it to ESPN. Yeah. It was everywhere. It was yeah. cool. It was super And they're cool. doing it again, which is the best part. And that was probably mm-hmm. the coolest field I've seen in a while. Yeah. Besides, like Boise State's blue field, which is cool, but FIU does it. Uh, right. Boise State's blue field is iconic, right? But it's iconic. But that does does that make it good? I don't know. I don't no, know how I feel no, it about the non-green. It, cool. it doesn't make field. it good, but it makes it iconic. Yeah, yeah like, you know what? uh, what's the other school? East Carolina, right? Mm-hmm. They have their turquoise one or their teal. And, and I know I forget what team it is, but there's an all red field as well. I forget which. Ew, team that you see, that's ugly. Yeah. Like I don't know, maybe maybe I'm maybe this is a traditionalist feeling, but if it's not if it's not natural green, it's just it's just, it's just off. I think the NFL did it right when they a couple of years ago they they officially abolished any field that's not green. So did they have yeah, a field that yeah. wasn't green. No, never. But they didn't oh, want anyone to come up with some funny ideas and do that. <laughs> so yeah. Shout out to the Raiders. Raiders. Sorry, what did you say, Kevin? Yeah, I was going to say shout out to Jay Ajayi, Boise State legend. Wow, well, that's a blast from the past. Holy cow, Kevin. Okay. <laughs> hey, Super Our, Bowl Super Bowl winner, right? At the Eagles? Yeah, yeah he was, he was yeah. on that Eagles squad. Yes, he I was. mean, he was on the Dolphins, pretty... but like. Mm-hmm. All right, that, that's how I remember Jay being on the Dolphins. for. Like, I remember the day. He had that one really out. great like breakout year, and then after that, eh, not really anything. I remember when they traded him out. It was pissed. Let, let, I mean, let, let's just say that our running game has definitely improved overall since then. Yeah. You, got, you got Raheem, you got you have uh, what's his name, Jeff Wilson, and and then and, and you might have Dalvin Cook. You if they bring Dalvin, Dalvin Cook, Cook, the Dolphins are a Super Bowl favorite. Look, I still have my issues with the Dolphins, mainly being there. What, what are they going to do for tight ends, and what are they going to do for their offensive oh, yeah. line to improve those two things? I would but, like, like them to everything Dolphins. else. I feel great about. I would have loved Dalton yeah. Schultz on the Dolphins. That would be cool. That would have been cool. This is like the first year in a very long time where I feel completely confident in the defense. The defense, I have no worries. Jalen Ramsey, Xavier Howard, Javon yeah. Holland. And imagine if they try to make a move for Buda Baker, who requested a trade. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it'll happen, but man, that would be cool. Have Javon that would be Holland. cool. I think the rumors are Buda's probably going to Philly. I've heard that. Comments yeah. he said. Well, but... did Darius Slay. Didn't he try to leave Philly or something like that? They or released him actually, or I think they did. Yeah, they, they end up really, releasing him. I think so. They released him and he resigned. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. So I think we could wrap it up. Jeff. Yeah, let go over the hour mark. Let, let me do my duty and announce what's coming up next, aside from football, and of course yeah. that obviously is baseball and softball. So baseball, fourteen and twenty-two record. That's fun. Um, they're taking on the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles tomorrow here in my in at the FIU Baseball Stadium. Jake may be there, so shout yeah. out to Jake. They are again hosting UTSA this weekend. 
um, first game on Friday at 6.30 and then moving on to Sunday at, at, at noon. Then they're heading to Boca to take on FAU the week after. We may be there on Friday. We may be there, yeah. Softball. It, softball is 18-22. and 22. They are coming off – a tough stretch where they were swept by FAU and then lost a single game to UCF, but they're over in Jacksonville this Wednesday, taking on North Florida, the Ospreys, I believe at 2 PM. Then they're back home for six straight games against middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky. Um, th that, those last six games are the last six games of the regular season for softball at home. They finished the uh, regular season on the road against UTEP uh, in early May. So the next home game coming up is on Friday, April the 21st uh, at 6 p.m. against the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. Alrighty, Adrian. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like the world to know about FIU athletics or just your work in general? Go for it right wow. now. I'm just excited to, for what's for what's coming up. I'm excited uh, for soccer, like j just next semester sports in general. Like I'm mm -hmm. just, it's a whole big question mark. What's going to happen with soccer? What's going to happen with football, basketball? Like, I'm just excited. Like you know, college yeah. sports is so much fun. It's always ever changing. So, you know, I'm excited to see what's happening. That's not, that sounded like a Scott Carr quote, Adrian. Adrian, I'm just gonna say that sounds like that was a verbatim Scott. What something that Scott Carr would say, but uh, yeah, I agree with you. A lot of storylines, a lot of, lot of uh, teams that have had success trying to keep the consistency, and teams like football that are trying to 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 go beyond, go further beyond. Yeah. So again, uh, Kevin, fi any final thoughts? If you want to talk about the Marlins for some reason, now would be the time. They're winning four to two. Jazz Chisholm hit a three run bomb. Edward Cabrera looks good. So I'm not I, I, I was on the turnpike and I was looking to the radio. They were down two to nothing. Let's but see. yeah, okay, that's cool. And, 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 and the jumbo shrimp are up. So I'm not complaining. The jumbo shrimp. So, All righty, everybody. Yeah. I speak for myself, my good friend and co host, Kevin Barral, and our wonderful guest, Adrian Valdivia, when I say so long and pause up.